I spent my early years living in Japan and the Philippines as a missionary. It was there that I met a young man named Jesus, who I still remember to this very day. A Man from Mexico The Story of Felipe de Jesus Jesus was born in Mexico in 1572. He received his faith from his parents' teachings and entered a Mexican monastery in his early teens. However, soon thereafter he found that he could not handle life in the monastery and so he left. Jesus then went to his parents and borrowed a lot of money, saying that he was going to work in the trade business in the Philippines. However, soon after Jesus arrived in the Philippines, he decided to use the borrowed money to live a life of riches and luxury and squandered all of it on every form of gambling and pleasure that there was. During that period of time, Jesus started to feel a deep emptiness in his heart, and so to fill that vacancy, he once again went to go knock on the doors of a local monastery. He was 22 years old. Most often, those who live such self-centered lives are never accepted into a monastery. However, the head priest of the monastery, Father Baptista, welcomed Jesus with open arms. During his time in the monastery, Jesus completely turned his life around and grew from his early mistakes. He tirelessly served in several of the local churches and monasteries and cared for the sick all the while seeking God with all of his heart. It was then that he decided to become a priest himself. In order to become a priest, one first has to be granted permission from a bishop. However, with no bishop in the Philippines at the time, he had to return to Mexico where one resided. So before he left, Jesus wrote a letter to his parents in Mexico. Upon reading the letter, his parents were absolutely overjoyed with his decision. His mother immediately began sewing together the white robes that Jesus would wear when he became a priest. So Jesus went aboard a ship called the San Felipe and left for Mexico. However, the San Felipe was soon hit by a fierce storm and drifted off course to the shores of not Mexico, but of Japan. In that period, Christianity was strictly forbidden in Japan. Because he was now in Japan, Jesus decided to head to a monastery he had heard about in Kyoto. Jesus had learned that none other than Father Baptista, who had welcomed him into the order in the Philippines, was residing there, and he was very much looking forward to reuniting with him again. However, on the very day that he arrived at the monastery, the ruler of the time, Hideyoshi Toyotomi, ordered Jesus, along with Father Baptista and the other priests, to be captured and detained. And so the order was given by Lord Hideyoshi, that Father Baptista, as well as Jesus and 22 other followers, were to be crucified and executed for spreading the teachings of Christianity. To set a powerful example, the city of Nagasaki, which was over 900 kilometers away from Kyoto, was decided upon for the location of their execution, as during that time, it was a place home to many Japanese Christians in hiding. The trek through the brutal Japanese winter would have been near unbearable to what Jesus was used to in Mexico. When they finally arrived in Nagasaki, Jesus had lost a lot of weight and all the color to his face. But Jesus seemed to be in a state of complete joyfulness and just before the execution stated, <laughs> この特別な御恵みに感謝してもしきれないほどです。サンフィリッペ号が失われたのは、私ヘススが救われるためでした。Jesus had completely accepted that his sacrifice was all in accordance to God's mighty plan. With the addition of two others, the 26 captors finally arrived at Nishizaka Nagasaki, which was to be the location for their execution. They were only about a hundred steps from the Nagasaki shoreline, and I watched aboard a Portuguese ship as they were crucified and executed one by one. As Jesus took his last breaths, he cried out with tears of joy. Yes, Sama! Yes, Sama! 
Yes, sir. Worshipping with all his might, Jesus' life on earth ended at the mere age of 24. It was 10 a.m. on February 5th, 1597. Although among the 26 martyrs, Jesus was the last to arrive in the country, he had become the first ever martyr for Christianity in Japan. I felt the powerful hand of God rest upon Jesus and choose him out of all the others. To me, the joy of this young man, Jesus, seemed to shine brighter than anything I had ever seen. i